And I think we are live. Hey everyone, Crypto Hedge here with none other than the notorious Charlie Lee, the man with a plan, the creator of Litecoin, and ex-director of engineering for Coinbase. Thank you everyone that's tuning in. And also thank you, Charlie, for taking the time to tune in for today's stream. Sure, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I wanna dive right in so that we can make the most out of the time that we have with you today. <clears throat> And the first topic of discussion I would like to cover is the current cryptocurrency politics and uh, media. So I know recently we uh, saw that you did an interview with uh, CNBC and there was a lot for the community to say about it. So from your interview with CNBC, people seem to dislike the fact that you said that there are only a few currency coins that will be utilized and the rest are going to be fun tokens, uh, namely like Dogecoin. So how would you reply to this, to the community? Um, I think people were upset because I wasn't, um, so to speak, pumping Litecoin. I wasn't there to kind of say, everyone should buy Litecoin. Litecoin is so much better than Bitcoin. Um, people should take a look at it and actually um, buy some Litecoin. Uh, yeah, because a, a lot of people are kind of investing in Litecoin as, a, as an investment and speculating on it. And being on live TV, if I just had said something to that effect, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would have probably paid more attention to Litecoin and bought more Litecoin. Um, yeah, I guess I, could, I guess I could have done more of that, um, but I wasn't there to kind of just to pump Litecoin. I wasn't there to to kind of just say Litecoin is so much better than Bitcoin. I was there to kind of explain to people why why Litecoin exists, right? Why would you use Litecoin um, in addition to Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. And not just because, um, yeah, so I, I think no matter what I said, part of the community would be upset. Um, but I will have more opportunities in the future, and I'm definitely learning from it. It'll be, and I'll try to do a better job at it. Absolutely. I know it's very uncomfortable. I was telling some of my viewers, you know, I, I do talk a lot about you a lot on my channel and I was just letting them know, you know, there's a psychological component. It's very uncomfortable to go on live television where there's millions of people watching. Um, so it's a lot different than just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So, yep. so, uh, in, in results of that, how many different cryptocurrencies do you think personally, uh, just in your opinion, are going to end up being utilized uh, when the result of mass adoption does occur? Uh, I think there will be, um, in terms of using it as like real store value, there won't be that many as use as store value, right? So in terms of like using it for, um, yeah, I mean, people, people will get overwhelmed if there's too many, right? Right now there are just way too many like that. <laughs> People are, there's a lot of speculators, right? So speculators are okay with having, putting money in all these different assets. Um, just like how you would buy like, like tens of stocks or even hundreds of stocks with your portfolio. So in terms of actually making use of it, um, there won't be that many that would actually be useful. Like is there, I don't see why we need a separate token or separate uh, coin for every little thing that's different, right? A coin for gaming, a coin for um, just every everything. I don't see why I didn't need for that. So my vision is that with um, with like Lightning Network or something similar, and like a good UI around it, you wouldn't even know. Like you wouldn't need to hold all these tokens, all these coins. You could just hold all your money in Bitcoin or Litecoin. And when you need to, if there is for some reason an application that requires um, ether or some other token you can easily trans um, atomically uh, convert it on the fly to the token that you need okay uh, just like just like how um, people don't uh, don't have like barrels of gasoline in their house barrels of oil for their cars right if they need it they're going to gas station and buy it with us dollar or whatever currency they prefer Right. There's no reason for people to invest in crude oil prices just because they own a car. So same thing in the future for cryptocurrency in a kind of a in that sense where you wouldn't need to own Ether unless you're running an application, a decentralized application, uh, and you need to you need some to kind of 
uh, to power it. Right? You can yeah. store the vast majority of your money in Bitcoin. Yeah, that's Litecoin a great way to put it. Um, <clears throat> so you said, uh, uh, what did what you say? You said, um, you basically said that store of value coins and some coins are not going to be store of value. So do you look at, I know Bitcoin is known as the gold standard coin. And um, do you think Litecoin is also going to be like a store of value coin? Um, I think Litecoin is finding a different kind of um, different niche with respect to like store value versus payments. So Bitcoin will always be the gold standard because Bitcoin will have the, um, the strongest network, the most secure, the most money um, mining it and keeping Bitcoin secure. Mm -hmm. uh, Litecoin will be second to that. And um, being, Bitcoin being the most secure, it would obviously cost more to do a Bitcoin transaction. And to doing a Litecoin transaction will cost less. So Litecoin can find a niche where it will be more used for payment, whereas Bitcoin will be more used for just storing. Um, my analogy with like gold and silver is kind of that idea where um, both gold and silver were used as money, um, but certain times gold would be more used for kind of keeping it there, where silver would be used as in coins for purchases. So yes, you can use a gold coin to purchase, but then you get, um, it's not as convenient. And yes, some people will store silver, um, <clears throat> a store of money. So, so you're not really, when you say uh, Litecoin being silver to Bitcoin's gold, you're not necessarily saying that you're uh, referring to the value of the coins. You're more so referring to the use cases. Like you said, with uh, silver is more so used for, uh, payments and exchanging because it's a, a lower value, but also there's a lot more of them. And then you have gold, which <clears throat> is basically for bigger purchases or bigger uh, wealth transfers, right? Yeah, it's more it's more about it's less about the value of the coin and more about the the um, easier to use because it's less fees and uh, faster confirmation times, obviously, um, and that. Um, yeah, because it's it's less fees than you would use it for purchases of smaller items. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm glad we got that out of the way because I know a lot of people. I saw on Reddit. I know that you're on the Litecoin Reddit quite a bit as well, and someone was trying to end the perspective of the uh, Litecoin being uh, silver to Bitcoin's gold. And some people think that when you say that, you are basically hindering its potential or growth, but it, really that's not the case. It's more so the use cases of the coin. Yeah, but like the potential growth is not going to be restricted by what I say or what people say, yeah. right? I mean, if it, if it becomes popular, it will, the price will go up, people will buy more of it, and if it becomes useful, right? Even if I keep saying Litecoin is silver to Bitcoin, gold, and it, it doesn't hinder the growth of Litecoin at all. Yeah. Um, so, so your core vision is basically, it's been the same all along, that uh, really Litecoin is going to be used for payment and Bitcoin is going to be used as a reserve of value. Um, yeah. So, all right, so the next topic that I would like to talk about, and I know that it's been brought up quite a bit in the community, it's, <clears throat> is regulation. Are you worried about regulation and what do you think will result from future, uh, further regulation of cryptocurrency? Um, regulation is inevitable. Um, so, I mean, governments will want to make sure that cryptocurrency is not used for um, illicit purposes in terms of like funding terrorism, right? Um, and no, like, I'm, I'm against the war on drugs. I think it's kind of silly and waste of taxpayers' money. But it is what it is, and the government will want to make sure that people are not using cryptocurrency to um, pause and to be able to um, sell or buy drugs. So that's going to happen, um, and governments are regulating the the exchanges and the and the wallets uh, to make sure that 
people are using cryptocurrency um, not for anything illegal. And I, I don't have a problem with that. I think in order for Bitcoin to, uh, unlike other people, I think in order for Bitcoin to actually succeed, you have to play within the, um, our society, right? Within the laws of our society. Um, so it's gonna happen and it's been happening and governments are regulating um, like Coinbase and the, and the exchanges and wallets. Um, the other part is that uh, regulation helps in terms of keeping exchanges honest, right? It's been like a wild west where exchanges can pretty much do anything. Uh, like you hear recently, the Chinese exchanges, OKCoin and Huobi, have been taking customer deposits and like betting it on stock market and making a return on that. Um, stuff like that just is not good for the consumer. And exchanges like Mt. Gox or other exchanges where the, um, they're not very good at keeping track of where their own coins are um, because they have no one to kind of report to. Like mm -hmm. they can do whatever they want and no one is keeping an eye on it. So chances are we will find exchanges that do whatever they want. So it's good yeah. to have some sort of regulation to make sure that um, customer deposits are actually managed correctly and protected correctly. And, and insurance are bought in case um, something really bad did happen so that the funds can be returned to customers. Um, yeah. But the regulation can go overboard too. Like the, the New York bid license, they do have requirements that if you have, um, <clears throat> if you have like funds for customers, you have to buy insurance or you have to have a bond to, um, to guarantee that the fund, customer funds will be okay even if something bad happens. But then like for Bitcoin, <clears throat> some of the regulations, they try to push so that if you have like a million dollars worth of Bitcoin holding for customers, you have to have a million dollars of US dollar somewhere to, to match it, right? That, this makes it very hard for a company to hold Bitcoin because you don't have the capital to, to kind of match that, um, to have a reserve amount of money, right? So yeah. regulation makes it hard for small companies to, to kind of exist and to survive. So there's yeah. a, there's kind of like a good thin line where, where you draw the line of what, how much regulation is good and how much is too much. Yeah. So regulation is really a good thing, but I think that as a community, we should limit um, the amount of regulation that we see. Cause I know that we know that Bitfinex has recently shut out all us customers. And you know, sometimes I'm fearful that another uh, exchange is going to have the same thing happen to it. Um, but I think, yeah, regulation is a good thing. I, I completely agree with that with, when it comes to uh, noting and documenting certain, certain things. But I think that I, I'm just a little bit afraid that it's going to uh, break into the decentralization aspect that we all uh, find promise from the blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So do you think that we are going to lose some of the decentralization factor um, by having this regulation? Um, no, I think the, the beauty of cryptocurrency is that you can always opt out of the regulation once you get into the, the crypto space. So like once you like converted all your money from US dollar to Bitcoin or Litecoin, then you don't have to go through a centralized exchange to, to transact. Right, exactly. you can just use a Bitcoin Litecoin network. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so, sorry. So, I think um, <clears throat> that's that's what I like to see, where more and more uh, services and like merchants start to accept um, cryptocurrency, so that we don't have to. We can stay in this. Um, in this cryptocurrency kind of economy where, you know, yeah, where um, you can, you're free, more free to do whatever you want with your money. But yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, it contradicts with what the government wants to do. So, well, yeah. I guess we'll see. I mean, I'm not really in a position to, to affect regulation one way or another. So I'm kind of just a bystander in that aspect. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, and we know that the, even you, you're not getting paid for the development that you put forth 
And I know that you mentioned that the community needs to all get together and, you know, force this mass adoption and, and awareness of cryptocurrencies because you know, the, the people that develop these coins are not just going to do all the work. We need people to come together and just, you know, spread awareness. But um, so moving on to the next topic uh, with colored coins, I know that you mentioned something about colored coins on your Twitter account. I know that you've been very active on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. So will someone ever be able to release an ICO to the Litecoin platform in the future from this colored coin perspective? Or what exactly did you mean by colored coins? Yeah, so right now, um, Omni uh, is creating a, their kind of wallet network layer on top of Litecoin, similar to how they have something on top of Bitcoin right now. So you can do ICOs with um, Litecoin. Um, it's, I think it's an alpha stage right now. Like they're going to release something pretty final pretty soon. Um, but if you, if you want to do an ICO on top of Litecoin, you can um, talk to Omni, wait for their release, or actually work with them right now. Um, so it's similar to Bitcoin, right? Like right now there's um, Tether. On Omni, Tether is a USD-backed token. Um, and Tether is, is going to be moving, uh, it's going to be supporting Litecoin in addition to Bitcoin very soon. Um, so you can create tokens using Omni. But the color coin proposal I mentioned on Twitter was something that, um, that something that our team or Johnson Lau and a uh, few of us have been working on, which is uh, kind of like a native way to do color assets on top of Litecoin. It's something uh -huh. that um, we're, we don't think Bitcoin will do um, because Bitcoin is, for one thing, fees will still be high on Bitcoin. So moving, supporting tokens is not going to be practical. Um, so whereas Litecoin fees will be le less, the supporting tokens may make sense. So something we're exploring, whether or not we want to do it um, uh, natively with Litecoin. The downside of it is that we're going to be doing something that uh, that is going to be different from Bitcoin. So our code base will start to differ a lot more. And with that, there's going to be more upkeep and more, more work maintaining it and making sure that uh, things don't break. And lastly, it will be code that we'll have to make sure that it's, uh, it's rock solid before we release it. And it will be a soft fork. So it's something we're talking about. Um, I bet it will take some time. We're not really like trying to push it out right away. And we have to figure yeah. out if that's something that we want to do. Yeah, there's more important things that are going to be developed before that. So, uh, so basically, it's actually being looked into. It's actually start, uh, going to be developed, right? Uh, the initial proposal uh, was put out by Johnson Lau. I mean, if you, I think people should take a look at it and see what they think. Um, you are always open to feedback. And, and where could people find this uh, uh, proposal? Um, What's the best way? Let me see if I can. I think the best way, the easiest way is to um, Google Satoshi Light Colored Coins Twitter. Maybe you can tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> I did tweet about it. I already tweeted about it like, a, like a, uh, earlier this month. So oh. if you Google Twitter Satoshi Light Colored Coins, uh, the first two results will will basically link to the proposal if you want to take a look. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely look into that. hope the viewers are also going to do that. Um, so <laughs> you mentioned something about lights uh, to Litecoin, with lights being a fraction of the price of one Litecoin. So we know that uh, Litecoin is obviously a fraction of Bitcoin, and they're like brother and sister coins, um, if you will. But wh why do you think that we should have something like lights to Litecoin when we already have Litecoin to Bitcoin. Why is that necessary? Oh, you're talking about the, the naming the unit, right? Mm -hmm. So this is this is all this is just like the name of the unit. So right now we have um, LTC, um, MLTC, and new LTC, right? So one LTC is worth a thousand MLTC. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that people were talking in the Bitcoin space where when you're trying to buy like one Bitcoin, it's worth so much, $4,000. Um, 
people get think that's too expensive, right? Um, so people buy, buy Litecoin instead. Um, so people want to like kind of move to decimal place, right? Have a name for a smaller unit so people can transact in that small unit. So it's because it's hard to say, it's hard to buy something when you're pricing it in terms of like 0 0.0001 Bitcoin, right? So we want to step, uh, stay ahead of the game and introduce like the smaller units now before it becomes too hard to introduce to kind of change the, how people think about Litecoin. Um, so once the thousand light would be one light and um, the other part of that is uh, to use the word photon as um, one one thousand of a light so a million photon would be one light coin so this is just something that would be um, kind of just a proposal it would be in the reference client where if you want to denominate your coins in light you could it will be a thousand times as many as how many light coins you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you, yeah, instead of the wallet showing you you have 10 light coins, it will show you you have 10,000 lights. So it makes it easier to transact. Um, so things will cost, like, instead of 0 0.01 light coin, it would cost a uh, 100 lights. I think that's a smart approach. Um, so, Moving on to the actual Litecoin roadmap, uh, as, as we all know, Litecoin has a packed roadmap. We have smart contracts, we have Lightning Network, Atomic Swaps, Mast, Covenants. Uh, so my question to you is, which project is currently in progress, being developed, and which project uh, do you believe is closest to being implemented to the network? Uh, I guess, Lightning Network would be something that we're working um, uh, closely on right now, and it, actually, I'm, I've been working on that over the over the weekend, trying to get um, LTCD working on the Litecoin mainnet. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Bless you. <laughs> thanks. Uh, and we're I'm going to work with um, Franklin to get some video out showing Lightning Network working on. Um, on Litecoin mainnet, and the, the thing about Lightning Network is that there's just multiple. There's a lot of teams working on it. There's like six or seven different Lightning Network teams. Um, we're doing a bit to help Lightning Network work uh, well with Litecoin, but we're not. The Litecoin development team is not like the core like Lightning Network team working on Lightning Network. So um, a lot of communication between the different teams, um, and the main problem with Lightning Network is to is really a UI problem. I think once the protocol is is fleshed out and it's set in stone, and all these different teams are working on the same protocol. Um, speaking of which, a few of these teams actually released a statement last week saying that they're going to combine their efforts to make sure that their the, the different code that they're working on is protocol compatible. So, which is great because we don't want like six different teams working on totally different protocols that have like five different Lightning Networks that don't talk to each other. So that's great. Um, like I said, the main, the, one of the biggest problems is, U, is the UI issue, right? How do you send coins to someone else? How does, um, what does it look like to use to regular user? Do you still see um, Litecoin addresses or do you see something that is kind of different? And in the background, uh, your your transaction could be using Lightning, or it could just be a regular Litecoin transaction. So in the ideal world, the way I see it, I want to be able to say, um, send one Litecoin to this merchant somehow. And in the background, whether it's done via Lightning or whether it's done via a on-chain transaction, I don't care, right? I don't I don't need to know details. Just like if you go to your website right now, like this is comparing like Bitcoin Litecoin with a protocol, as a protocol, right? If you go to your website and you're fetching web page, as a user, you don't care whether or not, whether it's going through TCP IP or UDP, you don't care that it's written in HTML or JavaScript. All you care is that the web page comes up and you see the images and the, and the functionality that the web page provides. So I imagine a world like in a few years, same thing would be 
happening with cryptocurrency where you're sending money. You just care about sending value to the recipient. You don't care about Litecoin addresses. You don't care about on-chain. You don't care about how long it takes to confirm. You don't care about whether it's using Lightning Network or any other potential feature networks that we think of. Right. So, so the UI for that is the, is the hard part. Yeah, so, so the Lightning Network right. is currently uh, it's the most progressed uh, project for Litecoin development. But like you were saying, uh, the, the Lightning Network don't necessarily work for Litecoin or develop Litecoin. They're just doing an off-chain protocol for Lightning Network, right? Correct. Yeah, so like Lightning Network teams, they're not they they work on lightning network for for any coin right currently they're working initially they were doing it on bitcoin and then now they're like light lnd supports both bitcoin and litecoin and in the future it can support n number of coins and then once it supports all these coins it could it'd be easy to do atomic crossing transactions between the, the different networks so hold on one moment i'm just going to try to make sure i'm tracking my thoughts uh, so if so, when Lightning Network uh, comes about and gets released, which basically, as you're putting it, is the most progressed, and it's probably going to be released uh, soonest to the other things on the roadmap. Um, so with that being said, wouldn't it make sense for atomic swaps to be released with Lightning Network, or do you think that they're going to be in close proximity with their releases? Um, I don't know when, like, I guess people people are very excited about atomic swaps, but in the grand scheme of things, atomic swaps is not the most urgent thing with Lightning Network, right? We just we need to make sure that it actually works and it's easy for people to use, right? People sending transactions instantly between two parties for little to no fee, uh, for for very low fee compared to relatively compared to like the on-chain transaction of Bitcoin is like the highest priority right now. So atomic crossing transactions will be. Um, Probably be later on, right? If I, if I, if you think about, it, if you were a Lightning developer team, Lightning team, right? You would focus on getting the network out first, right? Make sure everything working before we talk about multiple networks transacting with each other. But I assume it would come out soon after that, right? And we have, a, isn't there two? I don't know. Isn't there two uh, different teams working on Lightning Network? Different. Uh, Projects, they're both Lightning Network. Do you know what I mean? I think that I don't know. Yeah, there's there's like there's like six or seven different teams working on Lightning Network. Yeah, there's uh, the Lightning Network. What I consider like one of the the main team or like the the original team, the Lightning Dot Network team that created LMD. There's Blockstream has uh, one or two people I think working on Lightning. Um, there's there's a team in France. Um, there's, yeah, there's a few teams. There's also a team in at MIT working on Lit LIT, which is another Lightning Network implementation. So there, there's quite a few teams working on Lightning Network, and they all have different. I mean, it's it's cool, right? So you have you can run different clients that talk the same protocol. All right, it's kind of like um, it's like kind of like different browsers that all talk um, HTML. So, uh, moving forward, uh, let's, I'll stay on topic with the Lightning Network for now. Uh, we have the Zap Wallet, which is going to be the Lightning Network Wallet. Um, could you give us some insight on what exactly that wallet is? Um, is it? I think I saw on t uh, Twitter recently that it's currently being uh, beta tested before release. Uh, yeah. So it's a. Uh, I mean, it's a. Uh... It's a wall. It's one of the first few Lightning wallets out there. It's still being kind of it's still uh, the person Jack Mullins is working on it, um, and we're working closely with them with him to support Litecoin, um, and he's excited about doing that too. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like a proof of concept right now of how a Lightning network outland wallet would be, um, and people can play around with with it right now, but it's more. It's slowly kind of becoming more, more user friendly. Um, so right now, like the stage of Lightning Network is more like alpha beta stage, right? There's, you can have, you can run a Lightning Network daemon uh, using console and kind of create the payment channels and send coins between 
uh, between the different nodes. Uh, but it's it's not as easy for a, just a regular person to actually spin up the Lightning Wallet. And Jack, uh, Zap Wallet is trying to do that, where anyone can download a kind of a uh, uh, mobile app and start using Lightning. All right. So moving forward with the Lightning. Wait a second. Let me let me close my door. I think it's a little noisy. <sighs> Okay, sorry about that. You're good, you're good. Um, so let, let me see real quick. So when do you expect the first versions of Lightning Network to be released? Maybe the first versions of the uh, Zap wallet? Um, it's a good question for Jack Muller. Um I can ask him. Um, it will be released when it's ready, I guess. The, I think a lot of the back end still needs to be worked on for Lightning Network. Like, I don't think they have a good way of finding um, routes. So the beauty of Lightning Network is that I can be connected to you and you're connected to someone else. I can say that person by routing through you. But in order to, I need to be able to find that route between you and that person in order to go through you, right? So that logic has not been kind of fleshed out yet. So yes, right now it's easy to kind of create a, a payment channel between me and you, and I can send money between you, me and you, like really quickly with no fees. Um, but in order to like create the whole actual network where you can find other parties is um, work in progress. So, and now that Bitcoin has SegWit, um, the Lightning Network teams are really excited and are actually they're they're working very hard to 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 get uh, to move forward on that. So that's exciting. I know you're uh, very very excited uh, about Segwit being activated on Bitcoin. I think the whole community was extremely excited about Segwit finally being activated uh, on Bitcoin, and it it truly opens uh, the doors to everything else that's going to be implemented not only on uh, Litecoin but with the atomic swaps and everything, is that isn't it necessary to have SegWit before you have Lightning Network or atomic swaps? Yeah, Lightning Network is a SegWit is required for Lightning Network. Or specifically, we needed a way to do um, to fix the transaction malleability issue before we can do Lightning Networks, because Lightning Networks requires um, requires that the transaction to not be malleable, so that you can create this you can create the payment channels without fear of someone messing you up and causing um, the transactions to be broken. So yeah, and SegWit is the best way to get um, like, uh, to get transaction availability. And yeah, SegWit provides, makes it easy to do a lot of things, like moving forward if you want to do like confidential transactions or um, mass or any of the cool technologies, to, like new, like future upgrades to Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, can be done with just the software now. A lot of new stuff can be added to the network, uh, to the protocol with just the software, which is nice. So SegWit is basically the notorious malleability fix, right? Malleability fix? Yeah, it, it's, it does a, a few things. Malleability fix is one of them. And, um, and, uh, and also it increases the block size. Um, just if you if people start using segwit transactions, it will increase the block size. And we're starting to see a lot more segwit transactions on Bitcoin and Litecoin now, like Trezor and um, and Ledger both are starting to support uh, segwit transactions, and it's very nice. Like the transaction fees are are cheaper because with segwit transaction using block rate calculation, your transaction actually costs less. It's smaller uh, on the network. Um, and it costs less. People are starting to see that. Okay. Then moving forward, I want to touch base uh, on one more thing with the Zap Wallet. Uh, do you know yet if Zap Wallet is going to be introducing an iOS and Android application uh, for convenience in the future? Uh, I don't know. 
I can ask Jack Muller, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I assume um, that's direction he's heading. But this is just early, early days right now. And then moving forward, I want to talk about atomic swaps. Um, I know that uh, Vertcoin was on your roadmap for uh, atomic swap testing. It, what is your involvement? Is there any involvement with that being on the roadmap? I think it's a little bit weird to see that. Uh, what do you mean by weird to see that? Like, well, not really an explanation. I mean, is it going is is Vertcoin going to be or is Litecoin going to be atomic swapped with Vertcoin before Bitcoin or? Um, it's like we have we haven't really started working on that yet because. It has to. We need the code to be there, right? We need the actual the atomic swap capabilities to be part of the Lightning Network schema. Um, so once once we have that, we can start testing on it. And Vercoin was one of the few coins that when we released the roadmap. So it was we decided that that would be a good uh, partner to test uh, atomic swaps with. Uh, but right now, um, we'll see, right? If Whoever wants to work with us, we can work with them to start testing atomic swap when we're, when we're ready. Um, but potentially Bitcoin, we can even do that with Bitcoin now that Bitcoin has SegWit too. So activated SegWit, yeah, that's a big jump. That's awesome to see that. You know, with all the Bitcoin politics, and I actually want to talk about that real quick, uh, not to get mm -hmm. off topic. But what I know that you voice your opinion on Twitter about Bitcoin and the politics and and uh, Jihan Wu and Bitmain. Uh, what where do you stand, and how could you simply put where you stand with when it comes to like SegWit 2x and things like that with all the Bitcoin FUD, if you will? Um, I stand very closely aligned with uh, Bitcoin core dev team. Um, the my philosophy is that um, Bitcoin is trying to do something that's um, that's amazing, which is to have uh, uncensorable transactions. So that's what decentralization gives you, where no one can prevent you from sending money to someone else, right? So with good, there's also there's good and bad with that, right? One is that you can you can send bitcoins to drug dealers and buy drugs online, um, and no one can stop you. Um, the other is that you can you can donate to WikiLeaks, for example. Um, WikiLeaks, like the U.S. government um, and other governments, have blocked, um, have told, have asked like Visa and banks to block any uh, money sent to WikiLeaks because, for whatever reasons, right? So, but with Bitcoin and Litecoin, you can actually send donations to WikiLeaks and no one can stop you. And that's one of the best thing about um, decentralized money is that it's your money. You should be able to do whatever you want with it. Uh, that said. You can also send money to terrorists, right? You can send money to fund terrorism, which is really bad. Um, but it's kind of like cash, right? You can use cash to do whatever you want. You can use cash to buy drugs, or you can use cash to donate to a homeless shelter, right? So it's what people do with it. And I'm, in, I'm, my viewpoint is that people should be able to do whatever they want with their money. Um, and if that if they really want to donate to terrorist groups, um, it's not up to me or anyone else to just to say they can't. Uh, so, with that goal in mind, um, the reason why I'm kind of siding with the Bitcoin Core team is their view is that we need to kind of keep these Bitcoin decentralized, um, secure, decentralized, and above all else, right? Yes, unfortunately. Um, by doing that, we're kind of making it harder for people to use Bitcoin because the fees are going to go up, transaction confirmation time is going up. Um, but that's the sacrifice, that's a trade off we have to make. If you kind of sacrifice the decentralization aspect of it, Bitcoin eventually will just become a more, a, a more decentralized PayPal. And that's Good for that's fine for a lot of people, but it's not fine for for me. Right? Bitcoin is supposed to be um, uncensorable money where no one can stop you. Right? It's money that 
people can't block, can't censor. And yes, it will cost more, but it will be worth it for those kind of transactions that you want to be uncensorable. Um, and it's not worth the trade off to for uh, just for to double the block size just so that you can double the amount of people you can transact. that. It's better to move that kind of uh, that kind of usage to layer two networks uh, like Lightning Network and others, whereas the base layer will still cost more and be the most security centralized. And you can always use layer two for for other stuff. So the reason why Bitcoin is becoming slower and the fees are going up is simply because of the amount of users? Uh, yes, yes. Because um, the amount of users is also the price. So um, because Bitcoin is, um, is $4,000 now, when I first got into Bitcoin, it was $30, it dropped to like $2. So it's a thousand times more than when when I first got in. So the fees will go up as the price goes up too, because you're moving actually more. There's more. It's protecting more money, right? So you have to pay more for that. Okay. And while we're on that topic with scaling issues and the times for transactions and the high fees, uh, how is Litecoin going to dodge that bullet? I know that Litecoin has four times the supply. But it's basically a, a direct fork of Bitcoin. Um, you know, it has Segwit and everything like that. But I feel like Litecoin is going to run into the same scaling issues when there's m even more adoption uh, in the future. So, could you reply in a sense that, like, how how do you think Litecoin's going to jump over that hurdle, and how will it successfully do so? Um, yeah, I think Litecoin will run into similar scaling issues, um, not as bad because we are kind of ahead of our game. So by the time Litecoin has any scaling um, pressure, Lightning Network will be mature enough and a lot of the scale can be can be addressed by Lightning Network and also other layer two protocols um, that we have not even thought of yet. So um, in that sense, Litecoin is lucky that Bitcoin is kind of trailblazing the way um and kind of bitcoin is running all these scaling uh hurdle, like all these scaling hurdles and people are solving it so by the time litecoin runs into these issues the issues will already be mostly solved uh i believe and the fact that litecoin has um four times as the size of a block size uh we can do a lot more and also because um although bitcoin needs to be like needs to sacrifice everything for decentralization, decentralization and security. I think Litecoin can be a little bit more, have a little bit more freedom with respect to that. So it can, um, it won't be as decentralized as secure as Bitcoin to uh, from trade off it can handle more transactions. So when the time comes, we'll have to, be, we, we might have to make some tough choices too. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So basically, Litecoin is going to dodge the bullet when it comes to scaling uh, with transaction times, transaction speeds, because of the Lightning Network and uh, a lot of the other things that are going to be included in that. But I guess the concern is more so the transaction fees when it comes to approaching that hurdle when we have more users, uh, and then it will actually become an issue. Because, you know, B Bitcoin, the fees are going through the roof. That's probably more of a concern to me than the actual transaction speeds, because of course, it's going to be covered by the Lightning Network. So, what would you think about the fees? How would you uh, manage that? Um, yeah, Litecoin fees will also go up, um, but then we'll have Lightning Networks on Litecoin to do lower fees transactions. So, some people are saying, like, um, with Bitcoin, with Lightning Network, why do you still need Litecoin? Right. I still think that Litecoin um, Lightning Network transactions will have will be lower fees than Bitcoin Lightning Network transactions. So, Bitcoin Lightning Network transactions. May not be able to do microtransactions, whereas Litecoin can. So we'll see. We'll see that where in the future the Litecoin fees will go up. It won't be as crazy as what we're seeing with Bitcoin today. At least I hope not. Um, but it will still be higher than today. And but then you can always go Lightning Network on Litecoin.
Well, if there's more users for, for Bitcoin in the future, I mean, the fees are going to be astronomical. It's going to be ridiculous. I mean, Litecoin is definitely four times ahead of the game when it comes to the fees, at least. Um, yeah. With the Lightning Network, so. Yeah, we'll see, how, we'll see how that plays out in the future. Like, if you ask me, like, create a Litecoin, like, I mean, my vision is always been the same. I couldn't explain to you, like, why, like, I can explain to you in detail why people would use Litecoin as opposed to Bitcoin, right? Because um, I can't know for sure that the fees will go up in such a way, right? In the past few years, Bitcoin's fees went up like a ridiculous amount, more than I expected. And now people see that, oh, there's a reason to have a network that is um, kind of works alongside Bitcoin that has lower fees. Um, but like four or five years ago, people didn't see that, even I didn't see like how that would play out. So in crypto space, uh, things happen really fast. So uh, we'll see what happens in the future. Like it's yet we have yet to see um, the full potential of Lightning Network, and that's very exciting. Absolutely, very exciting things to come for Litecoin. I mean, the the roadmap is just <laughs> really appealing. Um, so I want to move over to another topic with the politics of Bcash. I know you don't like to call it Bitcoin Cash, and I don't call it Bitcoin Cash either. I call it Bcash. I but, I feel like Bitcoin Cash is just a mouthful. Um, I'm less about like, it's also like confusing to people. Um, yeah, and I mean, they, they want to be considered the real Bitcoin, so that's why they use Bitcoin Cash. But it's, it's so confusing for the average person when you say Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. Um, yeah, so I, I'd rather if they just, I think Bcash is a great name, to be honest. It's, a, it's actually, a, it's easy to remember, it's easy to say, it's easy to spell, and it's short. Um, but yeah, you step on some toes when you start saying Bcash. And now people are, people are telling me, uh, on my live streams that I can't say Bcash anymore to refer to Bitcoin cash because somebody, I guess, decided to make a ICO called Bcash, uh, which is interesting, but I mean, Hey, <laughs> there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of trolling going around. Yeah. It's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate to see, you know, all these crazy ICOs, but. Um, so yeah, moving forward, well, with Bcash, do you think Bcash has a future? I mean, what do you think is going to end up happening to Bcash? I know that a lot of people haven't sold yet. I know you just recently sold your Bcash for uh, only Litecoin, but what do you think about the future? Um, uh, so, I, I don't know for sure, obviously. My view is that... Um, if they, the, the Bitcoin Cash wants to be Bitcoin. So it's basically going to be a winner take all in terms of which one is Bitcoin. All right. So right now, Bitcoin itself is winning. Um, I don't think Bcash or Bitcoin Cash will ever overtake Bitcoin as the real Bitcoin. Um, it's, I think the, the development team, the community, Bitcoin is so much stronger. Um, there is no reason big B cash as an altcoin can exist, right? If, if it's happy to be an altcoin, we have tons of altcoins, like we have Litecoin, whatever, all these coins that are trying to do something different. But if you actually want to like be the king of the hill and be Bitcoin, I think that's a bit too ambitious for, for B cash or Bitcoin cash. And I don't think that, I think they'll fail like miserably. Um, the other thing is that the, the difficulty algorithm for Bitcoin Bitcoin, um, the way it's set up, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, it's not very friendly towards um, competing currencies using the same proof of work. Um, as other coins like Namepoint has seen, it just doesn't work. Like the main coin will, will cause lots of problems for the smaller coin because of minor jumping between different coins for profitability um, and the and the price and basically it becomes super volatile in terms of blocks times in terms of price in terms of everything so bcash it's hard for bcash to survive the way it is right now even with their emergency difficulty adjustment um it's not a stable scenario where whereas where you see like ethereum and ethereum classic they're very stable because the, if, because of ethereum's difficulty adjustment which is really quick um it's there's no uh there's no issue with it where Miners will just mine the coin um, if it's profitable and 
the, the hash rate will kind of move along with the price. With Dcash, um, the difficulty adjustment, as we've seen the past past week, um, Bitcoin Cash could be starved of blocks for a day, and then when difficulty adjusts, it could have like six blocks in in uh, in ten minutes, right? When it's fast, so that's not very good. If you want to use it for cash or for anything else, it's not very good to have a network where where blocks are um, where you don't know how like it could be really slow or really fast blocks. So that they have to fix that somehow. And the reason why I say it's not stable is right now, I think right now, if you look at the, the charts, it's pretty stable. Um, the profitability for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash are about the same. And uh, blocks are found in a very relatively consistent time. But the problem is it's not a safe, stable situation, uh, Nash equilibrium, because if someone pumps Bitcoin Cash's price up 10% right now, it will kick off an oscillation again because if the price goes up all of a sudden like if price goes up 10 percent if either price goes up 10 percent against the other right if bitcoin cash drops 10 percent or goes up 10 percent in a day the price then the hash rate would just move over all of it almost all of it because it's just 10 percent of pure profit over mining the other chain you be miners are supposed to be profit driven right that's how bitcoin works so if Bitcoin, if it works according to how Satoshi designed it, all the miners, right? In theory, all the miners will switch to the more profitable coin. If it's only profitable by one percent, then it's not, then it's not. People aren't going to switch because the switching cost is high. Plus, there's risk, right? Not you not be able to liquidate the coin you're mining, or you have some preference for for one or another. So if it's ten percent more, then um, you would definitely switch, right? In theory, everybody will switch because you'll make 10% more. You can always mine the coins and sell it for the other coin if you really want to. So, but then when that happens, um, it's going to cause, it's going to slow down Bitcoin a bit if everyone moves to, if a lot of people move to, to Bitcoin Cash. Um, but it's going to really kill Bitcoin Cash because of, it's going to like inflate away the coins and then the next, a day or two when the difficulty changes again. So it's not a stable situation. And yes, it can be stable for a day or two, but any change in price would cause a problem. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't think that uh, Bcash has really anything appealing, you know, anything that, uh, that makes it have an advantage over not even just Litecoin, but even other altcoins. I mean, the, literally the only reason why I think it's been successful it's because it's simply a fork of Bitcoin, and that's what all the FUD was about on August 1st. Um, and it, then I did I, uh, research and I figured out that one of the reasons why it kept its market cap was because people couldn't access their Bcash fast enough to sell it to drop the price or whatever uh, it may be. Is that true or? Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly why it's worth this much. Like to me, it's not worth much at all. That's why I sold all my Bcash. Um, but I mean, it is, it's what people think it's worth, right? So if, there, if we have a lot of people who think that Bcash is worth something, um, then then it is, right? It's worth something to them. So yes, initially the uh, the price is all over the place because there's no, the market wasn't efficient. There was no way for people to, to send coins to the exchange to sell. So the, um, so yeah, so it was really high. And, it, and once people were able to, it dropped, back down to something reasonable. But then recently there was a pump. Um, I think it was, I actually I don't know why, but it went up a lot, which caused the problems that the guys was facing with difficulty with miners all mining with all of them. Uh, yeah, in terms of altcoin, it's not anything, it's not a good altcoin, but it's it's 10 minute blocks, just like Bitcoin, even, even right, it's, it's slow blockchain. Uh, it has this difficulty algorithm that's just messed up. Um, yeah, it's not like, there's no reason why you would use Zcash over Litecoin other than because you, you for ideological reasons, you support Zcash. You think Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin. Um, and also because it, you think that Bitcoin Cash has a lot of users, right? Because it, everybody who has Bitcoin has Bitcoin Cash. Um, but in reality, I don't think it has a lot of users. Like people who actually 
are able to from my from everyone I talk to, but obviously it's by it's a bit biased because my circle of friends are are more supportive of or against Bitcoin Cash. But people I talk to, either they they haven't touched their Bitcoin Cash because it's too hard. This is in cold storage, so those aren't really users. They're not using the coin if they can't touch it, or they have sold it for Bitcoin, right, or Litecoin. So in terms of people actually using Bitcoin Cash and not just exchanging it, it's very small. I mean, you can say, you can say the same about Litecoin, but for Bitcoin Cash, I think it's even a lot smaller. So moving forward to the next topic, uh, I want to talk about the Smart Crypto Vault project collectively on the Litecoin roadmap, uh, which has uh, Merkleized abstract syntax trees, covenants, and smart contracts uh, to work for the benefit of Litecoin. Um, what exactly do you think all of these things will uh, end up uh, providing to Litecoin? Is it going to be an anonymity factor, confidentiality? Uh, no. So um, there's two there's two things. Uh, so Smart Crypto Vault is a Merkleized abstract syntax tree plus covenant. So what that provides is uh, a more of a smart contract capability. So it's adding, it's moving, it's adding smart contract to Litecoin and Bitcoin, and to make it more like Ethereum to be able to handle more stuff. So uh, covenants is the ability to uh, kind of create um, to own coins uh, to have like a safe way to own coins where you can if someone steals your coins you can pull it back or there's I don't know if you if you've used like um, Coinbase vaults you know how how nice uh, a vault system is where you have coins in a vault um, if you want to pull coins out it will take you two days. So it's like coins in the safe, right? For a code storage, where it takes two days for you to move coins out from the vault to your wallet. So if someone hacks into uh, your Coinbase account, it'll take them two days to move money out of your vault. And in the meantime, you can block that transaction if you see it, right? So Coinbase will contact you via SMS, via alternate email addresses. It will say like a vault withdrawal has happened. If, if you didn't do this, click here to cancel it and contact us, right? So you have two days to block anything, and but if you if it's you, then you just wait those two days for the vault to happen. So this is similar to that, where um, but it's actually in protocol. It's not with, with Coinbase. It's a centralized service. So if Coinbase, if someone hacks Coinbase, then they can steal the money because it's actually the money is actually owned by Coinbase. It's not protected by the protocol. Whereas Covenants will have something protected by the protocol, which will make um, make it much safer to, to uh, hold on to Bitcoin and Litecoin. And um, mass is allowing like um, more uh, smart contract capabilities. So that's something that's very exciting that we are looking forward to um, getting onto Litecoin soon. Um, in terms of uh, privacy, something else we're, we're looking into is confidential transactions. Uh, that will take a little bit more time to flesh out uh, the details of CT. Um, so those are two things that I'm, I'm quite excited about: uh, smart contracts and content and, and fungibility, privacy fungibility. A few more questions for you, real quick, if that's all right. I know we're pushing yeah. the time. To, um, so, with confidentiality, I know that Monero uh, is a huge coin with for anonymity. We've seen it surge up like crazy in the past few days or past few weeks. So. If Litecoin will have the confidentiality aspect and security in the future, what would be, uh, in your opinion, the use cases of a coin like Monero if Litecoin has everything that it uh, approaches? Um, the, the difference between with Monero is that, this is something I, I like about Monero, is that they, um, they enforce privacy. So every single transaction will, I don't know if they do it right now, but Soon, or maybe they're doing it right now. I don't know. I haven't used Monero at all. But every single transaction has to be private. So with Litecoin um, and even Zcash, it's it's what's called opt-in privacy, right? You can well, okay, Litecoin doesn't have it yet, but in the future, if it has confidential transaction, you can opt in to use confidential transactions to create a transaction. You pay more in fees because the transaction will be larger. Um, but 
most transactions will likely not be uh, confidential. So you, you opt into it, but because of opt-in uh, privacy, it's not totally private because people can see, okay, this transaction is private, but the one before isn't. So you can actually see what's going on before and try to figure out, untangle like who owns what before that. And if you figure that out, you can kind of guess about this transaction. But with Monero, um, what, they, what they're doing is that every single transaction is private. So you can't see anything, right? There's no part of this um, web you can actually see what's going on. So that makes it like really private. So if, you, if you're opting for like true like privacy, assuming the Monero like, like link signature is not broken, then it's, um, it's a better uh, coin for privacy. Um, yeah, but I think Monero will have really big, really hard scaling issues because of the way they're doing privacy. By, doing, by enforcing full privacy ring signatures, like they can't uh, prune any output. So as time goes on, it gets harder and harder and harder, like exponentially, I think, to run a, a Monero node. All right, and then two more questions, I'm gonna let you go. I wanted to touch base on mining real quick. Someone asked uh, about the recent Bitmain exploit with Litecoin mining. Uh, do you personally think that Litecoin's mining is decentralized? I know we have Bitcoin and Bitmain and they mine a, a large percentage of the mining pool. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on mining, decentralization for Litecoin and also the Bitmain recent exploit for Litecoin mining? Um, so the exploit is, I assume you're talking about ASIC boost. It's mostly, it's mainly, it's only for Bitcoin mining. It doesn't affect Litecoin mining. Um, so that, that, that answers that question. In terms of decentralization for mining, um, I think it's not decentralized enough. So after going through the whole process of getting SegWit um, onto Litecoin, um, I see, I've, I've seen like how things work. And uh, honestly, it's right now, it's like a few big players control like the majority of the hash rate because um, not because they actually do control the hash rate, but they influence the hash rate because they like bit like with Bitmain, um, they own the majority of the machines that are that are mining Litecoin and Bitcoin. Not so much Litecoin because Litecoin also has um, you know Silicon, which is making machines. But for Bitcoin, they own the majority of the machines, so they they can influence their um, their purchases to their, their partners to do what they want, right? I don't know for sure that that's what they're doing, but they have that power to, and it seems like they are where they can say like, if you don't follow what we want you to do, then we're not gonna sell you more machines. And if you don't, people are, if, not, if you're not able to buy more machines, then you can't make money. So that's, that's a huge influence. Yeah. And that's, that's bad. I mean, on one hand, they are profit driven, so they just wanna make money. Um, but on the other hand, having one or a few entities being able to control the network is not good for the health of the decentralized currency. And I think just seeing how hard it was to get SegWit passed on Bitcoin and Litecoin shows, is, is proof that it's not good, right? To me, SegWit is, is pretty much a no-brainer. Um, it does so many good things for very little downside. And for that to have to have to go through this kind of battle um, is is just silly. And same with on Litecoin, right? Everyone knew that SegWit on Litecoin would only there's only good. There's nothing bad about it. It's just going to be good. It's going to show that Litecoin actually has some use, can actually do something quicker than Bitcoin, and the price would just go up. People knew that. Everyone knew it. Um, but then, like miners were blocking it because of some other reasons, right? So. It's not good when, when small number of parties can actually do something that's harmful to the, the currency. Yeah, I think SegWit is definitely an advancement and it's a progressive move towards better things. And we know, we know the other coins that have SegWit, we've got Litecoin, Vertcoin um, that have segregated witness, which is awesome. So I, I know I tell everyone personally to, to look at the SegWit coins. It's a big deal that Bitcoin has SegWit activated, huge deal. And then we have Litecoin that already has SegWit. They're working on Lightning Network, Atomic Swaps, a lot of big things to come, and I'm, I'm 
it's awesome to have you on my channel right now. And I have one more question for you. Yeah. So someone asked on Reddit, I did a Reddit post to get people's collective uh, questions on there for the interview. And um, someone asked, is it true that someone big will adopt Litecoin for their services soon without mentioning any names? Uh, is, it, is there any insight on that? I don't know of, I don't have any insider information in terms of knowing that someone based on adult Litecoin. Um, possible. Uh, unfortunately, it's not something, and even if I did, I can't say anything. So, um, so no, the answer is no. But I mean, I'll, I would expect that Litecoin will, will the ball is, has started rolling and we'll get more and more bigger names adopting Litecoin. Um, yeah, so I'm as, I'm looking forward to it as much as your viewers. Absolutely. You heard it from the man with the plan. The ball is rolling. Big things to come for Litecoin. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on my channel today to discuss some of the current news and events uh, with not only Litecoin, but the cryptocurrency space in general. So thank you so much for joining me. You're awesome, and I'm probably your number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> All my fans say that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Charlie. Take okay. care. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. All right. Thank you, guys. Every thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning into the live stream with Charlie Lee. If you guys want to tune into the post uh, conference discussion, I'm going to be doing another live stream right after this one, um, and I'm also going to have the find the founder of the Litecoin Community Alliance, which is recognized by Charlie Lee, uh, and they're pushing hard to get mass adoption and uh, certain other things in place. So uh, make sure to tune in for my post-conference discussion. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. There are future videos to come. You guys are awesome, and thank you for your support. Take care.